Hey, good morning everybody. This is Mr. Ainsworth and we are going to get into a lesson on the possible side lengths of a right triangle, you know, given the hypotenuse. And my name is Mr. Ainsworth. As I just said, we are in MRWC here at Great Oak High School. So MRWC here at Great Oak High School in Temecula. All right, let's get right into it here. So we're going to take what we learned and from the previous lesson. I talked in a previous lesson about the, uh, the distance formula, how it's related to the Pythagorean theorem, and we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem actually to see if, uh, you know, what are the possible side lengths of a right triangle. These are right triangles only now, okay? Right triangles, ones with a right angle involved. All right, given the hypotenuse, which is the longest side. Okay, longest side. So here we go. Let's get right into it. Now, before we do though, I want to do just review the Pythagorean theorem. So let's do that. So Pythagorean theorem. All right. Now, some people uh, know the famous Pythagorean theorem using the variables a, b, and c. And if you are that person right here. All right, the two legs, the shorter sides are A and B, and the hypotenuse is C. And if you learned about the Pythagorean theorem, you know that leg squared plus leg squared, or A squared plus B squared in this case, is always equal to C squared. But I've taught my students that, you know, since we're not using A, B, and C all the time, we're using numbers and other variables, a better way to learn it is that you take the two legs, the shorter sides, all right, you square them first, all right? So leg squared plus leg squared is always equal to the longest side squared, which means that you, it should be equal to the hypotenuse squared. And remember, the hypotenuse is the longest side. So that was from the previous lesson. So let's use this to figure out the possible two side lengths, the legs I'm talking about, given a hypotenuse of root two. So let's draw some pictures here. So let's draw a right triangle. So if I give you this triangle here and I label the right, the opposite side of the right angle, which is the, called the hypotenuse, if I label that root 2, what are the possible side lengths? And I'm talking about these two sides. What are they? Okay. And we should know, based upon our, our previous lesson, that it comes from uh, a square, believe it or not, All right, or an, or an isosceles right triangle. That's the only way to get a hypotenuse of root 2. All right. So let me redraw this here. So from our previous lessons, we know that if we have an isosceles right triangle, which means the legs are the same. Uh, and if they're both one, we get a hypotenuse of root two. So the sides, okay, of my right triangle here are one, one, and root two. Those are the possible side lengths. And we know that to be the case, because if you square all three sides, it must satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. So let's check, okay? So here's my check. So using the Pythagorean theorem, I substitute the numbers in, and I square both legs and add, and it better equals that hypotenuse squared. So my check is this right here. I'm going to take 1 squared plus 1 squared. It better be equal to root 2 squared. So let's check it. 1 squared is 1 plus 1 again is equal to the square of root 2, which is 2, okay? Root 2 times root 2 is equal to root 4, which is just 2. So we get two here, and one plus one is two, and so yeah, that's a true statement. So it checks out. So what you do is you figure out the possible sides of the, of the right triangle, and you simply check it with the Pythagorean theorem. And if it turns out to be a true statement, then obviously you're right. If I came up with a false statement, and it didn't satisfy the Pythagorean theorem, well, then you're wrong. And then you backtrack and try something else. So on the next one here, let's say I, I have a another right triangle here, but this time the hypotenuse is root 3. Okay, what are the two possible side lengths? Okay, so let's say, you know, the other one's 1 here. All right. What could the other side, the third side, be if one side is 1? And this is where the creative part comes in, and you have to figure out what are the, are the two possible side lengths. Well, maybe, maybe you're thinking the other side may be 2, because 1 plus 2 is 3, right? So I don't know, let's check it out. Let's see if this is even possible. So what you do is you plug these values into this in the Pythagorean theorem and you check it. So is one squared plus two squared, is that equal to root three squared? I'm gonna put a question mark there. Is this the case? Well, one squared is one and two squared is four. 
and if you square root 3, you get 3. And 5 does not equal to 3. So 2 is not possible. So this tells me that a side length of 2 is not possible because if you, if you square it, you're going to be greater than the hypotenuse squared, which is impossible. All right, so this is not, a, uh, this is not possible. Let's just record that. All right, so that is definitely not possible. So you got to be thinking, whatever numbers you put here on the legs, when you test it with the Pythagorean theorem, you got to square both of these numbers, add them together, and it's got to be equal to the square of the hypotenuse every single time. So I'm just going to record this. This is not possible. I'm not going to erase it. I'm going to learn from it. So the side lengths of 1, 1, and root 3 are not possible. Just said that multiple times. So let's try something else. So how about... Let's just redraw the figure here. All right, now root 3 goes in the hypotenuse position. If this is 1, this could be, let's maybe, maybe we tr let's try roots. Okay, if it can't be 2, then try root 2. So is 1 squared plus root 2 squared, is that equal to root 3 squared? I don't know, question mark, right? So 1 squared is 1, root 2 squared is 2, root 3 squared is 3, and 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 is equal to 3. Ah, so this is possible. So in this case, the sides are 1, root 2, and root 3. Now that is definitely possible. So if you have a hypotenuse of root 2, going back to the first example, okay, the sides are 1, 1, and root 2. If the hypotenuse is root 3, then the possible side lengths are 1, root 2, and root 3. You'll see why this comes into play later on when we start constructing things. And, and then just keep on going on here. And maybe there, maybe there are some patterns here, guys. <laughs> you know me, I always ask you that. Maybe there's a way to do this easily, right? So the square root of four is nothing more than two. So if you start off with a right triangle and length here is two, or you can put root four there if you want. This is equal to root four. All right, what are the possible side lengths of the right triangle? Well, uh, if you learn from your prior work up here, can't be 1 and 1 because that will create a root 2. We want a root 4 or 2. Uh, so what we need to do is learn from the past. Okay, and it can't be 1 and root 2 because that will give me root 3. So maybe, maybe we need, uh, let me see, if we square root 2, I know I get 2. If I square root 2 again, I know I get 2. And if I square root 4, I get 4. Oh, and that sounds pretty good, actually. So let's check it. So is root 2 squared plus root 2 squared, does that equal root 4 squared? Question mark. I'm asking you guys a question here. So if you square root 2, you get 2. And here you get 2. And the square root 4 is 4. And obviously 4 is equal to 4. So what this tells me is that this, this is a working combination. So in this right here, my side lengths are root 2, root 2, and root 4. That's how you generate root 4 which is actually just two, okay? Well, let's see here, let's continue. Let's say we have a triangle that has a hypotenuse of, we'll get a little carried away there, root five. Okay, so they gotta get creative here. Oh, you know what, back up. Before we get to this one here, I forgot part C. There may be different ways of doing things here. So maybe, uh, we should try and get creative here. So hang on for a second. Let me just bring this over here. I forgot about listing all the different possible combinations because that's going to be important later on. So let's go back to our previous example here. So we know one possible side combination is root 2, root 2, and root 4. Well, believe it or not, there is another way. Okay. So let me draw another right triangle. So let's put root 4 up here. If I put a 1 here, okay, on the short side, okay, if I, I can't put 3 here because if I square 3, I get 9, and that's not going to work. That's going to be too big, all right? So, but if I put root 3 here, that might be a working combination. Is 1 squared plus root 3 squared, is that equal to root 4 squared? Well, that's 1, and that's 3, and this is 4, and 4 equals 4. So actually, we have two possible triangles here. So 1 square root of 3 and root 4 is actually a possibility now. So you can see now that 
if I give you a hypotenuse, there's not just one possible combination possible or a possible set of three side lengths. There could be two, okay? So again, I have two possibilities for a hypotenuse of root four. And what you wanna do is get really creative and you'll see how this plays in, in the next activity once, you, once we get there, okay? So going back to example D here, we wanna think you know, numbers that add up to five and then you know after you square them that is okay so if I put one here and if I put a two here I know I'm gonna to have to square these here and one squared plus two squared equals five so this is looking good so one squared plus two squared does that equal root five squared and the answer is yes because one squared is one two squared is four the square of root five is five and since five equals five that's a true statement it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem and because of that my possible side lengths become one, two, and root five. Oops, root five. Now that's not the only possible combination. Okay, so let's get creative here. Let me draw another triangle. Okay, and let's put root five here. And I know that two plus three is five, so if I just get a little creative here and put some roots here, square root them both, this might work because remember, when you substitute numbers in the Pythagorean theorem, <laughs> that's really good. Pythagorean theorem, you gotta square them, okay? Because remember, it's always leg squared plus leg squared is equal to hypotenuse squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. So root two squared plus root three squared is equal to root five squared. Is this true? Well, the square of root two is two, the square of root three is three, and the square root five is five, and of course it's true because five is equal to five. So in this case, my possible side lengths are root two, root three, and root five. So I have two possibilities here for this one. And again, you just gotta get creative. All right, so let's try a few more. So for a triangle with a hypotenuse of root six, maybe there's a couple different possibilities here. So if put root six on the hypotenuse, and I know that one plus five is six, so I can put one here and the square root of five here. I, could, I know that that's gonna work because I'm gonna square these guys. So one squared plus root five squared is equal to root six squared. Is that true? Well, one squared is one, root five squared is five. The square of root six is uh, six. And since six equals six, then my sides for this one are one, root five, and root six. That's one possibility. I also know that uh, three and three is six, so I can get creative here. I can uh, put root six on the hypotenuse and then root three on the legs. And the reason why that works is because root three squared plus root three squared is equal to root six squared. Why? Because the square of root three is three the square of root three is three again, and the square of root six is six. And so here, my sides uh, are root three, root three, and root six. Now, is that the only way? No, okay. How about two and four, right? So there's another possibility here. So if I put two here and root four here, I can get a root six here and the hypotenuse, all right? Oops, no, 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 no. Uh, root two, I'm sorry, root two. So is root two squared plus root four squared, is that equal to root six squared? Hmm. Well, square of root two is two, the square root four is four, the square of root six is six. And since six equals six, now my possible sides are the square root of two, the square root of four, and the square root of six. So here, I have multiple variations. Okay, I have three different variations to get the same result. And then the last one here, root 12. You can get really creative on this one here. There are many possibilities to get root 12 on the hypotenuse. So, so again, hypotenuse is always the uh, longest one. And think, just think of numbers that add up to 12 and then square root them. Like, for example, 1 and 11. Okay, so you can take the square root of 1, which is 1, and then the square root of 11. And so 1, comma, 
root 11 comma root 12 that would work because the, and these are the side combinations here because 1 squared plus root 11 squared is equal to the square root of 12 squared because 1 plus 11 equals 12 okay so we have one possible combination of sides now uh, you can get really creative here you don't have to use 1 and 11 I mean you could use you know 7 and 5 7 plus 5 is 12 so if you put root 5 here and root 7 here you're going to get root 12 on the hypotenuse okay let's check that so the square root of 5 squared plus uh, root 7 squared is that equal to root 12 squared well the square root 5 is 5 the square root of root 7 is 7 and the square root of root 12 is 12 and since 12 equals 12 here, my possible side lengths are root 5, comma, root 7, and root 12. And you, there's, for this hypotenuse, you could use 5 and 7, you can use root 6 and root 6, you can use root 3 and root 9, any two numbers that add up to 12, and you can get different possibilities. So here, there are many possibilities, many possible triangles result, okay? So just keep that in mind. Okay, now this, this little discussion here on possible side lengths of a right triangle is important when you start constructing triangles and constructing numbers. So you have to, you have to understand what you're doing here in order to understand what we're going to be doing in the construction. Okay, so if you have to listen to this video again, you know, to, to fully understand it, do it. Because I'm going to take these ideas and we're going to apply it through the construction when we construct different roots. Whether it's root 2, root 3, root 8, root 8 minus 2, you know, the different things. So we'll get to that later, and I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.